Water is our most precious resource. But where it comes from varies from place to place, and having enough water to use is one of our biggest challenges. Water from rainfall has a huge impact on communities because no one can predict how much water will fall and at what time of year it will happen, like here in the Machakos district in Kenya. 76% of the area, of Machakos area, is within the arid and some arid lands. And this receives around 500 millimeters or sometimes less of uh, annual rainfall within, within the year. It's only 24% of the, of the area in the district that covers, uh, that is, has some moderate potential, agricultural potential. To solve this problem, people are experimenting with different technologies to harvest water. Water harvesting means collecting rainwater and saving it for when there's no rain. Subsurface dams, roof water tanks, and rope and washer pumps are all methods of water harvesting. Water harvesting is uh, really very, very important in this area because after the, there's 500 millimeters of rainfall, most of it is, is lost through evaporation and also through runoff into the rivers. The Machakos Rural Development Program was set up in 2002 to solve the community's water problems. The project illustrates the water harvesting method of collecting runoff rainwater in a small subsurface dam. The water is dammed by means of a wall, three quarters of which is underground. The main problem which was actually striking the community was a lack of water. Initially, this stream was a dry, was a dry st stream. All the water used to go away as runoff to other rivers down across like, the river. And the community was left without uh, water. So we came up with the subsurface water dams uh, to, to, to stop the runoff. And uh, we stopped uh, using the check dam, the subsurface water dams, to stop this runoff so that this water can be retained in the community. This example of water harvesting has had a huge effect on the lives of the Machakos community. Uh, the community can use this water for drinking which actually will save them from going the 30 kilometers they used to go to fetch water in the river. And this actually has changed the, even the lifestyle. And now when we came up with the subsurface dams and we stopped the water here in the community, uh, now the cows are not dying anymore. And actually now the economic activity has changed from uh, sale of skins and hides of animals which have died, actually to production of horticulture. People used to go without water. They never used to bath because uh, Fetching water from 30 kilometers to come and bath here, it was an issue. And now the community has actually drastically changed. Now the people are very happy about the, the dam because now they have water in plenty. We've seen people growing vegetables, producing tomatoes and selling them among the, 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 their, their people, I mean among the market, the local markets. So we've seen the rural economies growing out of this, this rainwater harvesting. By increasing the water supply, the Machaca small subsurface dam now supports the needs of 150 families. But there are other harvesting techniques that can be applied to smaller communities. Margaret Ondiegi harvests water in two ways. She collects roof water in a tank and has a well which accesses underground water through a pump. The whole community comes here to use my pump. When it was introduced, the water was clean and people liked it. Like Margaret, the Kusa community also has a rope and washer pump that is clean, efficient and easy to use. This pump is becoming increasingly popular as people move away from the traditional rope and bucket method, which was also unhygienic. When water is used, the, the rope is used to withdraw the water from the, the well, always the rope will extend to the Periphery. So in the process, even animals come and graze, they, if, uh, they drink, they can even leave their dung and other things. So when the rope touches this dung and again it is taken back to the well, it can be a source of contamination. Also the rope itself, it wears out 
and then when it wears out, uh, it's made of a plant, so it will decompose in the, in the well. Now, the new synthetic rope is enclosed within a pipe leading directly to the water below. The Kusa community provides a good example of how water harvesting for domestic use can really make a difference. The community members were very positive when it was introduced. So what they did, they were very ready to provide the locally available materials. So Relma just brought in the consultant who, together with the local people, helped construct the well. So they were very positive. They brought all these locally available materials and the fundis, the artisans, made the pump and it was installed. As well as helping to build the pump itself, their positive attitude to the project has made it a success. You see, for it to succeed, the community must be involved for sustainability because they, they feel that it belongs to them. So the community were involved from the word go, so they were very positive. <laughs>